All right, we are about three minutes past one. And let's go ahead and kick it off by doing uh, some introductions. So I mentioned that I will be one of the presenters today. And my name again is Robert Schmidt, and I'm an account executive here with Davenport Group. I cover our Ohio Valley territory, and I am based in Nashville, Tennessee. I've been in the technology industry for about 14 years, and I joined the Davenport Group family last year. And I will let Isaac Shore from Datto introduce himself. Yeah, so um, I obviously come from the Datto side outside of uh, Davenport here, but um, I'm based in Durham, North Carolina, and I work as a product specialist. Uh, and my entire time at the company has been focused on the remote monitoring and management solution that we'll be talking out about today. So pretty excited to get to talk about it outside of uh, just doing a demo. Awesome. Thanks, Isaac. And let's go over the agenda for today. So first and foremost, I'm going to talk to you about Davenport Group. I think the majority of the folks on the call have worked with us in the past in some capacity. Some of you may have worked with us for years and years, but uh, there may be some out there that are uh, just getting to know us here at Davenport Group, and we want to make sure that you understand at a high level the value that we provide. Then we will have Isaac talk to us about Datto's remote monitoring and management solution. Lastly, I'm going to tell you about how Davenport Group can help in our managed services portfolio. And we have a Yeti cooler that we will be raffling off. It's a Yeti cooler with an MLB logo, as in Major League Baseball. Welcome to spring. We will be raffling off that Yeti cooler at the end of the presentation. And an asterisk on that, you do have to be present in order to win the Yeti cooler. So we will be raffling that off again at the end of the at the end of today's webinar. But you do have to be present to win. And as a reminder, we might we invite you to come off mute. We invite you to throw questions into the chat if you have any questions. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and kick it off and tell you a little bit about Davenport Group and who we are. And we are a full scale IT service provider, meaning that we can help you with everything from your end user compute devices all the way up to helping you set up and manage your own private cloud and just about anything in between. You can see from the slide that we are currently presenting the areas that we really focus our solutions on. But to sum it up, we really we can help with just about anything from uh, your infrastructure to your applications to security. We have a tremendous amount of engineers on our implementation team, and we do have, as I mentioned, managed services as it relates to just about anything IT related. Today, you are going to be hearing from our partner, Datto and Isaac, as we've mentioned, but I also want to highlight a couple of other strategic partnerships that we have here at Davenport Group. We are a Dell Technologies titanium partner, and we have been very closely tied to Dell for a, a number of years. And we have continued our relationship with VMware. We've been a VMware partner, and they are a strategic partners of, of ours in the new Broadcom VMware world with the Broadcom acquisition. And we can help you out with all things related to VMware. And lastly, we are a Microsoft Gold partner, and we have engineering resources to help you out with uh, ac across the board, across all of our strategic partnerships. And if you didn't know, we have folks spread all across the country to help you out, and we will talk a little bit more about how we can connect later in the webinar. Um, we really appreciate you spending time with us today. And uh, again, invite you to make this interactive. And with that, Isaac, I'm gonna go ahead and kick it over to you for the Datto RMM portion of today's presentation. Yeah, awesome. Well, um, to be honest, when I first started uh, at Datto, I, I didn't have much of an idea what an RMM was. And something that kind of came to mind um, 
when I first started there, I thought I'd be working on backup. That's a lot of what Datto does. And I was pretty new to even understanding what the MSP space was um, way back when there. But I think what uh, kind of changed it for me was I was um, I was doing a call with this uh, mom and pop shop. And they just started out. They were managing about, I don't know, 80 computers, school system, um, like a local middle school, small town. And I, I was uh, showing them the solution. And they were in the car on the highway there. And they pulled over on, off the highway to look at the rest of the presentation. I was like, oh, wow, that's dangerous, but thank you. Um, and when they... When we got through the presentation there, they were thanking me saying, oh, that's going to make this job so much easier because I realized they had been going device to device to device for all 80 computers and doing each Windows patch for each device one by one and installing everything one by one and looking through the application lists. And that took a lot more time than I think they had uh, realized things would take when they had started up. Um, so the little things like that always uh, made the job fun. But in the broad sense, I mean, the data RMM, there's people using it to manage, you know, 50 endpoints. There's people using it to manage over 130,000 endpoints. There's no real lack of scalability there. But talk a little bit about um, RMMs in general there. And uh, if you could go to the next slide here, Robert, I'm not sure if I have control over the... Let's see. Yeah, bear with us. Right. Yeah, so um, what you're seeing there is an actual uh, picture of the Dato RMM interface, and we can actually go past the slide here because when it comes down to it, every RMM, um, which we will talk about a little later, but every RMM kind of does the same thing. You got your remote control, your patching, uh, monitoring, reporting, and scripting. Now, the biggest point of failure in any um, tech sphere, any tech chain, is going to be probably human error. So mm -hmm. as many processes as we can try to automate, as many processes as we can uh, try and uh, proactively look out for, that makes environments safer and it makes uh, <laughs> well, uh, much happier managed clients there. So when it says why RMM here, proactively manage, um, there's things that you want to know before they even happen. If you have a disk that's about to run out of space, if you have a service that went down, if you have an application that's not up to date, um, you could manually check that if you can remember to check all that, but being able to do it en masse and just get an alert before it even happens, knowing that this update is going to come or the service just went down, but the RMM is able to automatically remediate that and start it back up for you. It's little things like that because ideally nothing ever goes down. Ideally, there's no problems that happen with a computer, but at the end of the day, that's what does happen. That's part of being in tech. So preventing those disruptions, because if you're running a business, that's the last thing you want to worry about. If something happens with your device that you don't understand what's going on, having somebody in your corner who does understand that, and that's their full job is to understand your environment, your devices, and make sure that everything's running smoothly. Um, but obviously that's very important. And then obviously the little routine tasks. So that uh, couple I was talking about with the smaller MSP there, the routine tasks like the Windows patching or the application updates or application deployments or, I don't know, mapping a drive, just the little things that they were doing manually were things that then they could automate with the RMM to make sure that they had more time to focus on if somebody called in and needed help in the moment. You know, so RMMs provide less disruptions for whoever's being managed, but also whoever's doing the managing. Um, have the advantage of being able to do this remotely from wherever your home office is as opposed to being on site for everything. Um, I think it's another big thing because you could be driving around town for half your day and uh, that's less time that you can actually be working and helping your clients. So uh, going on to the next slide there. Um, aside from those things that I already talked about there, the patching, monitoring, reporting, scripting and such, um, RMM is going to have, like I said, the same main functions. You have your auditing, your management, monitoring, support, reporting. So to go through some of these Auditing is going to be really just going through the entire device and saying, what does this device need? All right. And that could be, again, uh, a Windows patch or a Mac patch or Linux, um, which applications need to be up to par. Maybe there are some vulnerabilities that you hadn't quite foresaw because the RMM, you can use that to deploy your antivirus or maybe your endpoint detection response. But that audit is saying, 
everything the device needs, what do I need to act, action on? And the management, well, that comes down to everything I just talked about, plus the ability to remote into that device. And whatever issues there are, I need to be able to remediate those. I need to actually, um, as if I was actually on the device, I need that level of control, but from wherever I am. And the monitoring, again, that goes back to things like disk space or event logs, or maybe your antivirus is not up to date. Little things like that, that we wanna be able to get alerts on. If you call in, for some reason, your printer is not working, all right? You have something important to do. And the, again, the last thing you wanna do is deal with uh, whatever issue the computer's having. The support of you being able to call in to, in this case, Davenport Group and say, hey, I'm having this issue. Can you please hop on my device and fix this? And that's exactly what they're there for. And the RMM is the tool that they're using to do it. It's basically the, it's the taxi cab to a taxi driver. And then that reporting, now you can um, go every device, you can go to every device, you can make sure everything's uh, patched and monitored and all that, but unless you can look at all the information from all the devices you're looking at at once, then not only do you have to go to each of those devices, but you have to go back to each of those devices to make sure that everything's up to par there. So while in theory it's a very simple tool, just being able to do everything you do on a device but doing it remotely, um, it is arguably the biggest time saver for any managed service provider. And going on to the uh, next slide here. Um, and also something I wanted to mention to you guys, this is your time. So any questions at all as I'm talking here or anything you want to come off mute to say, feel free to pop it in the chat or just um, speak it into existence. That's what I'm here for. All right. I don't want it to be a, a lecture. But when, you're, um, when I said all our members do the same thing, I mean it. And if they don't do, uh, one of the things we're looking at on the list here, it's probably not an RMM. There are tools that are simply for monitoring. There are tools for um, remote control. There's a lot of them. But to be an RMM, it really needs to have all that functionality. I need to be able to deploy my patches, run reports, uh, the monitoring and auditing that we already talked about. And for those unfamiliar, the scripting and automation. So scripting is a huge part of any RMM because script is really just a small set of coded instructions. And those scripts can do anything from creating a new admin administrative user on a Windows device. That could be changing user passwords, mapping a drive, um, installing an application. Those scripts can really do anything that you can imagine. And it does come down to how good of a scripter you are. And some RMMs use a proprietary scripting language or an engine. Everybody kind of goes about it differently. But if the RMM can't deploy scripts, then whatever issue you're having on the device, the RMM can't really fix it. And one of the nice things about when you've made a script already is that you can set that as a response to uh, a monitor that's been triggered, for example. So if a monitor says, hey, XYZ service has gone down, the RMM can know, hey, I need to run this script in particular for that device, restart that service, and ideally have no lapse in whatever you need your device to do. Now, is there, I do want to stop here for a second. Are there any questions so far or any confusion about the uh, functionality of the RMM here? I do have one quick question. Yeah. Can, um, I guess, data determine if, uh, or, or notify or turn on uh, BitLock encryption? Like, let's say it should be enabled, but if it's not enabled for some reason, can it turn it on and notify us as administrators yeah absolutely so we could do that we could pull the bit locker key we can uh populate that to whatever device it's tied to um at the data arm and rmm in particular we have these fields on a per device level called udfs which are user defined fields so we can uh, put your bit locker status in there the key if you want to but really any information about that particular device we can populate there right, thanks here and we can now pop onto the next slide there. All right, poll question for everybody in the audience. And, you know, Isaac, as you mentioned, uh, the RMM tools, they all do pretty much the same thing. So how do you evaluate if an RMM is right for you? And, and we invite you in the audience to come off mute or uh, throw an answer in the chat if you want to participate.
And what I will say, so um, Isaac, I think you are going to answer this question, but I also wanted to highlight that this is the tool that we use internally here at Davenport Group to manage all of our employees, as well as for our managed service practice. Um, Richard C, functionality and cost. I think that's a good one. I'll tell you one uh, big differentiator as it relates to the data RMM that we're speaking of is that here at Davenport Group, as Isaac already mentioned, we have the ability to co-manage and or fully manage this solution for you. Isaac, I'll kick it back over to you. Yeah. So I like the answers that I'm seeing here. Um, needs to be lightweight, easy to implement, um, ease of use, functionality and cost. And while they do all kind of um, do the same thing, like I mentioned earlier, the ease of use and how they do them, I think is a very important part because when it comes down to it, some people have their preferences. Some people love Toyotas, some people love Hondas. Um, so people love Ford. Uh, there's not necessarily like a, a Ferrari of uh, RMMs because they are um, all essentially doing the same function, but at the same time, they do all drive differently. So that ease of use, I think is super important because when you have a technician who's, let's say new to the company, that learning curve, that's time when they're not able to do effectively their job. If something is complicated, if something has a thousand clicks to just get to the device view, right? Um, that's time wasted when it comes down to it. But at the same time, you need something that has a friendly interface, but at the same time doesn't lose any granularity. All right, there are RMMs out there that have gone so much for simplicity that a lot of the basic stuff you can't really do because they tried to make it uh, perhaps too easy. And then you have RMMs out there that are uh, so complex with so many buttons, you go in there and you feel like you're trying to drive a spaceship. So it is really hard to find that balance and it is um at the end of the day what's intuitive to one person may not be intuitive to everybody but we tried to go for the in mass intuition of what our partners say you know what are the functions they want to have quickly accessible what are the things they do on the day-to-day -day basis that they need quick access to and at the same time an rmm is supposed to be in the background so ashton um brought up a really good point there that it needs to be lightweight we can't be a drain on the CPU. We can't be sitting there just, you know, going to every tidbit of the computer, having access to things that we probably shouldn't because you do have, of course, confidential information there. Um, but at the same time, being able to access whatever you need us to, being able to pop into a remote session instantly. So finding that balance is, of course, very important. Uh, usability. I mean, reliability is going to be a huge end to anything. And Let's see, I think we usually go for about six months on our status page, but we do have 99 point, well, 99 point followed by four nines of uptime over the past six months there. Um, but reliability is also important because if somebody's having an issue and you can't rely on your RMM or to go back to the car analogy, if somebody needs a ride to the hospital and you can't rely on your car to start up, then, well, everybody's in a bad shape there. And visibility is also important, whether you're in a management position and trying to see what your technicians are doing, but for a technician, more importantly, that visibility into the devices is what I'm doing effective. If this policy, um, in order to prevent a service that's always going down, like Spooler, is that policy effective? Is it actually working? And then can I communicate that in a way that's going to make sense to my clients? Not everybody has the most uh, technical ap aptitude and they shouldn't have to. That's not their job. Everybody has a job they're trying to do. Everybody has a role. And as a technician, you need to be able to communicate in a way that's going to make sense to everybody. And I think the RMM does a good job of uh, generating reports that are going to be very user friendly. And uh, there's a lot of different reports you could run, but in our case, it's called an executive summary. And that gives a written breakdown of all the services that MSP is delivering. And then it'll show you with a chart or graph like, hey, these are the amount of devices you have. These are the amount of devices you have patched. These are the amount of devices that have XYZ application. And something that's easy to understand so you can know, hey, this is what uh, Davenport is doing for my environment. Because ideally, you don't have to interact with them because they're being proactive and getting everything that might be an issue, they're solving it before it actually becomes one. And then the flexibility. 
And in the sense of an RMM, flexibility could mean, okay, let's uh, expand the types of devices we can laugh, look after. So Windows, Mac, Linux, maybe you have some network peripherals like uh, printers, router switches, things like that. But a lot of times flexibility also means scalability. You know, how quickly can I jump from looking after 50 devices to looking after 400 to looking after 2000? You know, is there going to be any issue in that additional deployment? So there are a couple odds and ends to. Pardon me there, it's a pollen season down here in North Carolina. But there are a lot of odds and ends um, to look into because again, and I can't emphasize enough, they all do the same thing, but it's really just how they do it. And we can go on to the next slide past this year. But that kind of brings us from the large scope of all RMMs to talking a little more about Datto in particular. So um, has a little history there. Uh, Datto did start simply as a backup company. And our uh, founder, Austin, he was making backup devices out of Legos and computer parts in his basement when he first started. And then it did expand out. And in 2017, we acquired a company called Autotask. Now, Autotask had a professional services automation uh, system, so the PSA. And then they also had a remote monitoring and management solution, which was um, a little underdeveloped at the time, but that is what would go on to become the Datto RMM. So when Datto acquired Autotask, we were able to kind of strip those both down and then build them up side by side so they would always be able to talk to each other in a way, again, that would help technicians do their job effectively. It was always aimed toward that MSP space. So I guess an example of trying to make technicians more effective, if they get a ticket in from a user saying, hey, XYZ's happened on my device, on the Autotask side, the technician can just pop open that ticket and remote directly into the device from the ticket using all the tools in the RMM. Now, choosing the RMM here. So that first thing, security. Every data center that we have is uh, SOC 2 type 2. Uh, the data RMM has never had a breach. And of course, in technology, I never want to make a promise to say, oh, it's not a question of when or if, but the when and if have not happened. Uh, data RMM is a very secure platform. And it's something that we continuously work on to make sure it's secure. Uh, 256-bit encryption, uh, mandatory MFA, whether you're coming in as a technician or any user, because we don't want to really allow any openings, any vulnerabilities. We want to make sure that we're on top of that. And elegance, that goes back to that usability. You know, how granular, but how intuitive can you make something? And we found what I believe to be a very good balance. When I first started on RMM, um, I would go to friends that I knew had recently graduated college and I'd explain it to them just knowing if they could understand, if they weren't in tech, then I must be either explaining something right or the product was built in a way that was understandable. And I don't want to take any credit there. I think the team did and continues to do a fantastic job on making things that aren't too busy, but still has all the power you need. And the momentum, you know, delivering on the vision every month of the year, that sounds like a sales tag, but, um, Funny enough, that's actually literal. We have a monthly release on the RMM. Every three to four weeks, we will add something. We'll patch something. Whatever bug might have happened the previous month, we're on top of it. And we keep our release notes public. So you can see the development that we've had over the past couple of years. You can see every single bit that we have changed. Now, the platform. Um, we are a true cloud solution. Sometimes people will say they're cloud and they're just a uh, cola hosted or a uh, virtualized on-prem server. But our infrastructure is truly built out uh, in a way that is scalable. We're built out on AWS. And the scalability, um, there are, I want to say, over 10 million endpoints currently deployed from the data RMM. So there is no lack of uh, where you can take it. And the experience, you know, fast support, expert service, I mean, that is a ode to data in a sense because we do have, of course, 24-7 straight-to-tech support, but that's also um, aimed toward the Davenport group because... At the end of the day, they're providing the service, and we're trying to give them the tool that's going to be as effective as they are. And with Davenport's track record of service, I know if we weren't up to par, they wouldn't even consider us. So it has been a very uh, good partnership on both their sides. It's one of those companies that I know that they got the right tool and the right people to use it. And then we can go on to the next slide pass there. So. A couple of years ago, we released a new UI. Now, 
dashboards are an extremely important thing in the data RMM. And the reason I say that is because that's giving you real-time global insight into what's happening across all your devices. When I come into the RMM, I can see right from the get-go what's happening with everything, which devices need a Windows patch, which devices need a reboot, which device um, doesn't have its antivirus up to date, which devices are offline, any alerts that are coming in. Everything's there for me just the second I pop in. And in a lot of RMMs, you would have to go to a different page and perhaps run a report just to get that insight. But having everything not only on your main page, but interactive. So you can see on that left um, screenshot from the RMM, those wheels there. Well, it may be a little hard to see, but it says Windows patch status and antivirus status. When I mouse over that wheel in the RMM, that section of the wheel highlights, and I can click into that, and I can see exactly how many devices um, that slice of the wheel is applicable to. And I can see which devices those are. And I can click directly into that device to remote control or directly into the site that I'm managing it from. So I think the dashboards are honestly the, one of the biggest things about the ease of use and the accessibility to information because it shouldn't take you long to see what you need to do. And we can go on to the next slide past this here. And another thing is there's a lot of different ways you can remote control a device. And personally, I like to branch it into two different ways. So you can have your device be controlled without even knowing it, to be honest. So you have your back end remote control and then you have takeover of a screen. And on the back end, we have a tool called the agent browser where everything's short of actually taking over the screen. So uploading files, um, downloading them, Windows services, uh, registry editor, everything like that, we can do completely on the back end without interrupting whoever's actually using the device. Now, something we did develop because so many remote control tools need a separate install of some sort of application on the device, which is going to be a bigger drain on the CPU and generally just going to be a little slower. So we went and developed a tool called the web remote. And the web remote is a HTML5 based remote control. So when a technician opens that, it just opens, has another tab in whatever browser they're using. So now they can they could open multiple tabs of remote control. They could spread it across the monitors they're using. Of course, just within the one tab, they can switch between whatever monitors they want to look at or look at them all at once on the end device there. Um, and the advantage of HTML5 is that any device capable of HTML5, and that includes your smartphones or your iPad or such, are going to be capable of initiating that remote control session. So if a technician is on the go, um, ideally they're not at like their son's soccer game or something, but wherever they are, they can hop into that device and do what needs to be done. And again, that no additional agent needed. Um, that's the big thing because remote control can be a big drain on both bandwidth and CPU. So having this built in to the agent that's already lightweight from the data side, um, big advantage for both end clients so they're not slowed down, but technicians just so they can hop right in. And a little fun fact is when a technician is connecting, it says under four second connection time there, however long the connection takes, um, up the top left of the screen, it'll tell you, let's say it took, you know, 3.3 seconds, and it'll tell you whatever supercar gets zero to 60 in that span. So whatever your time is, it'll tell you which car gets zero to 60 in that particular span, which is, I think it's just a little tidbit the engineers had that in there for fun. And we can uh, hit the next slide here. Now, Another thing with RMMs is, well, when it comes down to it, the cost of change, that's a very real thing. Um, depending on how many devices you're looking after, it's not something you just flip a switch and suddenly, oh yeah, it's there. Um, it takes time and it takes training to make sure everybody knows how to use that. So especially in a co-managed environment, it's not something that you're just given access to and suddenly you know how to do every little single thing. Now, things can be intuitive, but at the same time, you do need some guidance there. So we do have one of the most extensive um, knowledge bases of any RMM in the sphere. And we also have a dedicated implementation department. So when we're implementing the RMM, we have a team with a dedicated manager that's assigned to whoever's case it is. So they're on there with every session, every call, helping with the training. They know the environment. They get to know the client. And then we have tools in place that if you're already using an RMM, we can transition you by simply deploying our RMM through that RMM and using the Datto RMM to uninstall the old agents. 
And that's the biggest thing a lot of the time, because if you have thousands of devices that you're looking after, um, doing uh, any manual process of, you know, sending the agent out or doing it device by device, um, that'd be a pain. So having the tools configured already to make that switch happen within a couple hours as opposed to a couple weeks. And then pre-configured, this is another kind of important thing is that nobody should have to reinvent the wheel. All right, so when you come into um, a new car, in no way, shape, or form, are you going to expect to have to do the wiring to set up cruise control on yourself? When you come into that new car, you expect certain things to be there and working. All right, maybe the seat's not adjusted to exactly how you like to sit, but it should only take a few buttons to get there. And same thing with the RMM. We have best practices built out, uh, currently 84 of them, and that's just for the policies. We have over 520 scripts that we already have in our library, ready to use the second you come in. And we have um, suggestions even from the implementation team. When it's being set up, you tell them what you want to accomplish, and they're saying, okay, this is how we're going to do that. This is the best practice that would apply there. And at the end of the day, we're just trying to make sure that that usability and utility is not going to waste. We don't want anybody coming to the RMM and not being able to get the full scope of its power. You know, some people do want to just use it for remote control, and that's completely their own volition. But at the end of the day, there's so many things it can do for um, a client, especially in a co-managed space where they're looking after their own devices, that getting training is always going to be important. And then we can uh, go on to the next slide from there. And I do want to ask if there's um, any questions or comments or anything. I know I've been talking a lot. I don't want to bore you guys. I know it's Thursday. Everybody's looking forward to the evening here. Oh, tough crowd. You think it was Friday? Wow. But when it comes down to um, integrations, now when you have something this powerful, looking into all your devices, kind of getting a whole scope of your environment, then it's not much good unless it's talking to the other tools you're also using. Um, it takes a village to properly manage and secure an environment. So aside from the Autotask PSA, which I mentioned earlier, just a few of the other integrations that we have is, of course, our networking gear. You know, um, controlling the ports on the switches, for example, uh, viewing connected devices, uh, web traffic. And our BCDR devices, which is business continuity and disaster recovery, kind of some of the original uh, Datto gear. But being able to fully back up your environment, just that little box or virtualize it or restore it straight from the RMM. The same with cloud continuity, just making sure that everything's backed up, seeing the status of those, the usage, uh, workplace, file protection. There's so many different ways you can have those insights and almost every single one of these integrations you can see just on the dashboard. So I can come in and say, okay, this device is down for whatever reason. I know exactly which router it's attached to, All right? This BCDR device, for some reason, um, there was a lapse in one of the backups here. I can click right into that BCDR device, see what caused the lapse, and then run an additional backup just to make sure that everything's covered. Now, you can go on past the slide here. Right, poll question. And we are coming down to the last couple slides here, but um, throwing this out there in case anybody on the webinar has any thoughts, what kind of data integrations do you look for in an RMM? Or maybe another way to say it is, what kind of data would you like to see readily available from your RMM? And just uh, if anybody's got any thoughts on that, feel free to come off mute or throw it in the chat. I think Isaac uh, transitioning into the very next slide. I think we're going to hit on this and um, we are getting close to the end here, folks. Software inventory, that's important. Software patch level, absolutely. And funny enough, one of our uh users in the RMM, I don't know if they were a real employee or not, was actually named Tim Taylor as well. And there's a uh, 
a laptop um, at the front desk of one of our offices that's labeled Sim Taylor's laptop, even though it's like the receptionist uh, device. But with a unified platform. Oh, well, I, I did say it takes a village, and that's true. There's about uh, 40 different modules or so under the uh, Kaseya umbrella. But on the data side here, single sign-on. So single sign-on to your Autotask PSA instance and your BCDR and your networking and your RMM. Um, having that all in one go as opposed to going to a bunch of different portals. Um, Real-time asset data. If you're finding out stuff that happened yesterday, today, we're not doing our job. And that intelligent monitoring goes back to what I was saying earlier about, you know, if something goes down, we need to be proactive. We either need to catch it before it goes down, or if it does go down, we need the RMM to automatically try and remediate that, whether that be through a script or alerting a technician so they can hop in there and fix that issue. And that seamless technician workflow, that bottom middle, that goes back to talking about the Autotask PSA. A lot of times technicians work through tickets. They get a flow of tickets, a stack of them that they need to work on, and going ticket to ticket, remoting straight into the device, and that recording what they do in that remote session so they can spend less time putting in notes and more time actually working is always the ideal. And contract clarity. And I think this is another big advantage of kind of the data module here. So a lot of RMMs have a bunch of different add-ons. So you get the RMM itself. And then you need uh, something to be able to do the Windows patching and something to be able to do an extra remote control and something to be able to do X, Y, Z. So uh, historically, data has only ever had two add-ons to the RMM. And for those of you who have, uh, I guess, any confusion about how RMMs are usually built, most of the time they're done by endpoint. So let's say that an endpoint costs, I don't know, well, I don't know, let's go with an absurd number. Let's say an endpoint costs like $10, all right? And generally it's going to be billed $10 per month per device. So if you have 50 devices, you are paying $500 per month to have the RMM on those devices. Now, that's pretty simple in itself, just being like, okay, per device per month. And everything you need to do that management is going to be there in the RMM. The only additional add-on um, which is optional is that we have a third-party patching module that we released recently and just if people wanted the option of more applications then that's what that's there for but otherwise uh, we've always been big on having everything you need out of the box we're not trying to nickel and dime and say okay you're going to need x and y and z but let's sell those as three different things so that says that uh as it comes down to the contract clarity and then the unified analytics, being able to run reports from either the RMM or the audit task side and pulling that information into one place uh, makes it both easier on the technician and also easier to explain to a client or whoever you're managing, like, hey, this is what we're doing for the environment. This is what needs to happen. These devices are getting old and I'd probably recommend we replace XYZ with ABC. But kind of when it comes down to there. And we're gonna head on to the next slide there. And everything I just said, this is really just a kind of written breakdown of that. So I'll leave it here for a second. And while y'all are reading through that, um, I do want to again open it up to any questions or comments or concerns, you know. Just start calling on people. But, uh, yeah, we can go on past that. And I believe that might be the end of my. And yeah. back to Robert. Perfect. Isaac, thanks so much for taking time out of your schedule and joining, joining us and educating us on the data RMM tool. And. I want to talk to you just a little, just very high level about how Davenport Group can help. And Isaac, I think you hit on this a lot during the webinar, but if we move on to the next slide. <clears throat> if you didn't know, we have a fully managed service portfolio. So everything that Isaac presented on today, we can manage that for you completely. 
Or if you are looking for a more hands-on approach, uh, we, we, as Isaac mentioned, can co-manage this solution for you by utilizing our advisory services. So you're not left out there on your own. We can co-manage that for you. Or we can also create a bespoke solution for you and create a, a custom, completely custom solution that's right for you and your environment. But um, the 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 net is that we we have a team of engineers that are ready to partner with you. We want to uh, work with you and learn more about your environment and understand how we can support you better in your projects. And that is pretty much it. The next slide is questions. So we want to go ahead and and, and Isaac, you've already paused a couple times. Thank you for for questions, but. Um, that is the end of the webinar. We don't leave yet. We are we, we do have the Yeti raffle uh, to give away here in just a second. But are there any initial questions while we've still got Isaac on the line? All right. Well, let's let's keep moving on. So we want to connect with you. We, like I mentioned, we want to partner with you and learn more about your business and how we can help you with your projects. And if you do take a meeting with your Davenport Group account team before Friday, May 3rd, we're going to give you an incentive. We want to give you a gift card to the MLB.com. Uh, so again, if you meet with us uh, and your Davenport Group account team before Friday, May 3rd. We're going to give you that gift card to MLB.com. And moving on to the next slide, just for joining today, we have a gift card for you to either Lowe's or Home Depot. So simply just for joining today, to get that, email the word DATO, D-A-T-T-O, as you can see on the slide, to our marketing department, marketing at davenportgroup.com and they will get you set up all right and the winner of the mlb yeti raffle is luke nelson luke nelson are you still out there yeah i'm here awesome congrats man you got a uh an mlb yeti cooler so That's Luke, awesome. we'll uh we'll we'll reach out to you from marketing and we'll we'll work on getting that uh in your hands. Awesome. I appreciate it. So that's what that's exactly what it looks like with the twins logo on it and everything. Uh that's a good question. <laughs> that would be Miley, sweet, but... are you yeah. I don't know if it's got a twins logo. <laughs> it's customizable. Are you a Twins fan? If you oh, are, yeah. then that's great. Okay, good. If if not, we can select from any of the MLB options that Yeti has available. So your choice to rep your team. Cool. Is it Congrats. Awesome. With beer or... Great, thank you. Oh, if only. I don't know how the shipping would work for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, thanks so much for coming out today and listening to Davenport Group and Datto. Isaac, thanks again for your time. Um, don't forget to email marketing and pick up that Home Depot or Lowe's gift card. Give you something to do. Well, I guess we won't be there this weekend, but uh, next weekend. And um, we're going to hang out here for a few minutes in in the in the webinar. We we are 15 minutes early, 14 minutes early. So if you have any questions that you didn't necessarily want to throw out in the the main portion of the webinar, hang tight. Uh, we'll be here for a few minutes. We'd love to help fill those questions, but don't forget, we'd love to connect. And if you do connect with us before May 3rd, you get an MLB gift card. And again, thanks so much for your time this afternoon. Thanks, Robert. Absolutely. And alum. I can hang out for a few minutes here too, guys. Uh, if there's any questions on the data side or um, I'll do my best to answer anything on the data or map, I could definitely cover there, but I'm more than just a pretty face. What can I say? So I can uh, stick around <laughs> for a moment here. So uh, my chat's not working. I don't know if my voice is working. Um, as far as data support, et cetera, 
I know this is kind of a let Devonport Group do your data for you, but if you can we purchase it just through Devonport Group and then interface with Datto directly, or does Datto only allow the uh, the third party communication? Yeah, we, we do have the ability to resell the tool and not have us co-manage it. And we do have a preferred pricing contract with Datto because we use a lot of their their uh, their products. So um, we can we can definitely facilitate that for you. And we could hear you loud and clear on that one, Paul. So thank you. I know you would uh, sent me a note and the chat wasn't working, but. That's right. It's teams. Yeah, <laughs> blame it on teams. That's uh, not my own ignorance. <laughs> yeah, and I guess but I can get with my account rep, but just a little bit better of a data demo because Honestly, I hate running software, um, you know, especially per device per month. I think that just gets prohibitive pretty quick when we have our current, I'll call it an MRM and be gracious. And it's a significantly cheaper annual cost. So is there a, a deeper dive demo or do I just reach out to my uh, Davenport account team to, to get that info? Yeah, yeah, Paul, we'll, we we are going to reach out and um, I'll get, I'll, I'll make sure that we get your account team to reach out to you specifically and we'll get that we'll get a deeper dive demo set up for sure cool thank you no thank you hey guys i just want to say uh, uh thanks and i'll discuss with my colleague and uh i appreciate your time today well we appreciate hey. you joining luke yep you bet have a good one <laughs> you too